everyone, Random Randy here. This is Yarn Talk episode 45. It is Saturday the 29th? Saturday the 30th of December. Oh, so this is going to be fairly short and sweet because I don't have a lot of things done. I do have a lot of new things started now that the psychosis of holiday making is temporarily over. I have made some decent progress on my sweater and I've got a few things that I've acquired over the last few days. So I'm going to breeze through it as quick as possible because I have to get Killian up pretty soon. It's just about end of nap time and my sojourn out to procure a few things for the fridge today ended up taking excessively longer than it should have. Yeah. This is why I never leave the house on weekends. Anyway, <laughs> gonna get right into stuff. So things that are done, I actually have five things, but two of them are things I can't really show on camera right now. One of them is a zero lovey, which if you've watched the channel for any length of time, you've seen a billion of those. Had one for an order that went out a few days ago. Hopefully it got there or should be getting there sometime in the next day or two. I have been on a washcloth kick. I am just in a get rid of all of the scraps kind of mood. So I'm taking all of the small balls of yarn that I have and looking at them and finding ways to do things. So I have this, which is just a dishcloth. I believe I showed one of these last time. The one that I showed last time is now in my shower. It's just done in half double crochet and a spiral until it was the width I wanted it to be, and then I just did a closed shell stitch around the outside edge. It is an 85% cotton, 15% polyester blend, which according to the label makes it so that it will stay bright longer so it will hold color better and dry more quickly. I like it a lot better than regular cotton. It is much softer and it doesn't get stiff the way that cotton does if you use it for more than a day or two, which is no fun. Another thing I have is one of the linen stitch dishcloths that I had started that I had planned to take to the night market and didn't end up getting to finish. Come on, focus. So it's late enough that there's absolutely zero natural lighting, so if stuff looks harsh, I apologize. This is Bernat Handicrafter cotton. It's red and has a silver metallic thread through it. Also have this, which I actually saw Ella on No Catchy Name Crochet Talk. Showed one of these, she's making some of these for a bunting, I think. But she showed one of these on her vlog just the other day. I think yesterday, actually. I don't remember. All the days kind of blend <laughs> at this point. But it's kind of Valentine's E. It is a heart with ruffles like you would imagine a regular Valentine's greeting would be. The pattern calls for using crochet thread. I used worsted weight cotton and a G-hook, and it came out this big. So I'm thinking of making some of these for coasters or pot holders, dish cloths, wash cloths, whatever people want to use them for, really. And that is a free pattern called Valentine's Day Hearts Crochet Pattern by Regina Ryu. And that is on Ravelry. I will link to that down in the description box below the video. Pretty easy pattern. I ended up making this. I finished the whole thing in about an hour, maybe slightly a little bit more, but pretty much an hour. And it's a good size, I mean, compared to a normal dishcloth. It's about the same size width-wise. It's just got funky edges on it. So there's that. That is really all that I have done. I have a bunch of other things that I am working on. I guess you could kind of call this a, a finished object-ish. So I now have both of the body panels of my sweater finished, my his and hers outdoor sweater. 
This is the front panel, which I'm gonna have to kind of slide through the viewfinder for you to see. Is this the front? Yes, this is the front. Because I believe last time when I showed it, I was finished up to this marker here, right by my nose, this little blue marker. That's all I had done in about another two nights. I finished the whole body panel. So now I have both of the body portions done. And I have, let me get to it. I've got like, all of my projects are in different bins. So I kind of have to move the bins out of the way to get to the ones under them for the things that have been neglected and pushed aside in favor of, ooh, new, shiny. Have shiny new idea syndrome sometimes, it's bad. Anyhow, I also got one of the sleeves just, I think it's a little more than halfway done. I know I'm done with the increases for it. This was the last spot I had to increase and from there everything is going to be just going until it's a certain length and then it's going to be doing the decreasing for the cap to sew in the sleeve. So getting there. I was hoping to have a sweater by Christmas. I don't think that's going to happen. However, I'm going to have a sweater by my birthday. That's all there is to it. That is my goal, is to have it down by my birthday because Hunter's birthday is the end of January and I have a few things that I wanted to make for him for Christmas that I didn't get to make. So I'm going to try to make those in secret to have some surprises for the boy who, without even trying, is an expert at accidentally stumbling upon presents. So yeah. So there's that. That is my sweater in progress. Also have, in line with use all the scraps, Find where the heck it is here. Make sure I don't accidentally pull stitches loose. All right, there it is. So this, I haven't decided if I'm going to have it as just a scarf or if I'm gonna sew the ends together and make it a cowl. I am not sure. So this, very, very long. I don't know if I can even lean back into far enough to get it all in the shot. Oh, just barely. This is all made with homespun. This is the leftover from the blanket that I made for my nephew. I had a skein and a half of the Harvest and Edwardian. So I have now used up the half skeins and have cracked into the full skeins. Essentially, it's just half double crochet and I'm just alternating the amount of rows of each. As you can see with the harvest, the color changes, kind of gets orangey, gets a little more yellow, and then it starts getting the green speckled through it, and then it gets super, super green over here. So this is just a basic back and forth half double crochet. It is, this is a bulky weight yarn and I'm using a nine millimeter or M hook. This is a Susan Bates hook with the handles and I'm not a big fan of hooks with big handles, but this is doable for me. So this was, what did I do? 162 chains, half double crochet into the third from the chain and you go from there. So you've got 160 stitches just back and forth, back and forth until it's as thick as you want it to be. I haven't decided, like I said, if I want to sew the ends together. And as you can see where I tied on the new ball of yarn, I have not woven in the ends yet because it is still in progress. But I haven't decided if I want to put it together so that it's an infinity scarf or if I want to just have it so I can kind of drape it how I want to. I'm planning on doing 12 rows, mixing and matching the colors. So this is pretty awesome so far. I'm liking it. It's going to be heavy, which is nice because I'm not really a scarf person. So I don't, I don't know if I want to make it a cowl or not. Other thing I'm doing, which is scrappy stuff. This is the last thing I have going, I believe right now. Yeah. So this is actually knitting. If you can see the giant 
fluorescent orange needle sticking up here. This is me trying to find a way to use up all of the scrap balls of Bernat blanket yarn that we have because last year my husband went kind of nuts making blankets for his family. I've made blankets for the kids. We have a giant blanket made out of it that sometimes is on our bed, sometimes it's on the couch, but it's huge. So we have a lot of little leftover nuggets of Bernat blanket yarn like these. So I've been trying to figure out what to do with them because I thought that doing a regular granny square would be beyond ugly and I'd only get maybe one or two rounds out of each of these balls because it's you need such a huge hook and it just it wouldn't get very far. So I'm actually knitting with all of these little balls of yarn. So what I'm doing is I've got this is the biggest square that I have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the smaller balls and make shapes that will make them equal in size to this. So I've actually got, if you can see this at all, there's one type of yarn here, there's another type here. So I sewed them together. Am I showing you the front or the back? Oh, I'm showing you the front. Oh, good. So I sewed them together here and then I picked up stitches all along the edge here and now I'm just knitting back and forth across both until this panel is the same size as this one. And I'm gonna seam those together, lather, rinse, repeat until I've used them all and then I'll set it aside and wait until we get more of it because I do still have quite a bit of the bulky yarn like that up on the shelf. So I'm planning to do that with those scraps and any other super bulky yarn that I have that is scrapulous will be made into squares, potentially also crocheted because you can join knitted and crocheted squares as long as they're the same size. It takes a little bit more mathing depending on your joining method, but it is possible and I think it would be pretty cool to have a blanket that has so many different textures and colors going on in it. So that's going to be my ugly brunette blanket, yarn blanket. And what else did I have? Oh, the few things that I have added to my voluminous amount of stuff that I already have. Don't mind me while I put this hook away here. This, by the way, is amazing. It is probably the best $12 I've ever spent. This case holds all of my hooks that I use regularly, has a pair of scissors, it has all of the cables for my interchangeable knitting needles. Maybe I can get the other side open. Haha! -ha. And this side has all of the rest of the tips for my interchangeable needles and all my ergonomic hooks that I don't really use very much anymore because I've gotten used to using Susan Bates again. I go back and forth sometimes. It really depends on the yarn. Some yarn works better with the rounded tip hook and some you need the pointier bits like the Susan Bates hooks. So if you're interested in a case like this at all, I'm actually going to link to this one below the video. If you want to check it out, it's on Amazon. Like I said, I think it was maybe $12 and we're a Prime member, so the shipping didn't cost anything and it was here in two days. I think you can actually also get some that are pre-filled with ergonomic hooks and things of that sort, but I already had a bunch of that stuff, so it didn't make sense. Anyway, so a friend of mine got me this off my Amazon wish list for Christmas. And this has some cool techniques in it that I've been interested in learning about, but haven't actually tried before. For instance, this has freeform crochet in it and gives you some tips on the easiest way to get through it and actually have things turn out the way you want instead of just having a yarn mess at the end. So I'm looking forward to that. Has beading tips. Mandala things. I'm just trying to find where the freeform thing is so I can show you some of the really cool bits. If you've never seen freeform crochet, it is some of the coolest stuff I've ever seen in my life because 
any piece that's made in freeform crochet, for the most part, is going to be one of a kind. Because most people make it with scraps and they just kind of do whatever their brain tells them to do and just roll with it until all your pieces are the right size and you put them together. Did I seriously go right by it? Here, let's find out where it is. Oh, of course, way at the end of the book. Skipped right past it. Of course, it's been one of those days. All right, so I'll show you this page because it doesn't have any patterns or anything. Not that freeform crochet really has patterns, but if you can even see the pictures, those are some examples of things that you can do with freeform crochet. Totally crazy, but I love it. It's very bohemian. Very, 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 very boho. Makes me feel like I got caught in the time warp and went back to the 60s or 70s, even though I wasn't alive yet then. That's how it makes me feel. So that book is awesome. Thank you, friend. I have a few things that I got today. I went to Joann's because I'm, I actually cracked into my last skein of Red Heart Super Saver and white. And that's what I use to make all of my zero lovies. And even though I figured sales would slow down, I'm still having orders for those trickling in and I don't wanna be stuck at home with no way to leave with no white yarn. So got some more white yarn today, but it is a Milland bag. It was, what were they? They were $5.99 today. And I had a 50% off coupon, but I don't know if it went towards this or something else because just about everything I got was on sale or clearance and I have no idea. And I don't have the receipt right at hand, so I don't know. But this is an acrylic yarn. It actually looks more like a big twist than a Red Heart Super Saver, which is fine because that means it's slightly thicker. So I can use the same size hook and the itty bitty teeny air holes that aren't that bad will be completely eliminated using the same size hook, which is great. So there is that. I got some more of the Big Twist Sincerely, their speckled yarn. This one is blue confetti. I can get it to focus. And it's an acrylic yarn, it's worsted weight, it's just white with blue speckles all over it of varying shades, which I think is pretty awesome. These were two for five. And for the critter that Hunter asked me to make for him, he actually drew a picture and asked if I could make this monster for him. So I'm gonna have to keep referencing it and try and figure out some plans to bring it to life. But I found this really cool grayish with a little tint of tan almost to it, Red Heart Super Saver, which I think might be a newer color. It's called Soapstone. It's got a bunch of different shades of gray to it. Very nice. And I got gold in Super Saver. Super Saver was also two for five. Now, unfortunately, I only need this for a very, very small portion of the thing that Hunter wants me to make. But I'm sure I can find something else to do with it too, whatever's left over. So there's those. What else did I get? Oh, and I was walking by the clearance section, which I should never do, and I found these. So these are cute little I believe it's howlite stone beads that are carved to look like skulls and they're multiple different colors. Does it even say on here what it is? No, it doesn't. It just says Fiesta Flat Skull, but I'm pretty sure that's howlite because that's the same one that some of the other skull beads that I used to use are made out of. Anyway, I thought that with these being small like they are, that they would make good stitch markers, so I got a coil of beading wire as well. What's up, big guy? So, I, so the manufacturers that I feel are this make. One of them is supposed to look like a dog bone. It looks like a dog bone. That's pretty cool. Let me show you. Let me check. I will come check out in just a minute, sweetie. I'm almost done, okay? All right, 
right, so that is it for my acquisitions. That is really all that I have to show for this week. I am going to get all this stuff put away so that I can work on it later. I'm going to go wake up the little one. Little being the operative word, my 40 inch tall, 40 pound three year old. <sighs> I'm looking forward to Hunter's appointment sometime next month to see how much he has grown since last year. Oh, is that supposed to look like a dog bone? That's pretty cool, I see. That's for Renegade because Renegade loves dog bones. She and does like dog bones. This is a cute dog bone, so it's essentially for her. Cool. I will be down there in just a minute, okay? <sighs> So like I said, that is it for this week. And I wanted to say thank you to everybody for hanging out with me for all of the Vlogmas videos. I think that I'm going to try and do a once a week crochet with me video where I just kind of random vlog while I'm crocheting and just kind of chat your ear off so that I can pretend I'm hanging out with people. <laughs> And I wanted to say thank you to everybody for just tuning in in general. Thanks to all the returning subscribers. Welcome to everyone who's new. I just tipped over the edge of 600 subscribers this morning, which is awesome. Super, super cool. Totally didn't expect it to get this far in a year, but nowhere to go from here but up, right? Already doing pretty decent, just gonna keep on climbing. So again, thank you so much everybody for tuning in and watching and I will catch you in the next one sometime next week. I really am trying to settle on a specific day of the week to record because with the insanity of the holidays, it's kind of been all over the place whenever I had a day <laughs> where I had some stuff finished. I was like, oh, I'll record now. Anyhow, before I jabber some more, I will talk to all of you guys sometime next week. So hope you all are having an awesome Saturday or whatever day it is when you watch this. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.